Today, I want to talk about soft skills that software engineers use. More specifically, I will try to motivate the necessity of developing your soft skills and how they're used by professional software engineers. I will talk about communication skills, organizational skills, and finish by providing some advice on how to improve in these skills. This is the sixth video in the series on applied software engineering, but the fifth one that talks about the various tools and processes that are widely used across the software engineering industry today. This video is intended for an audience that is interested in finding out more about the software engineer profession, but has little experience in the industry. All right, I think that's all that you need to know before we begin, so let's get to it. When it comes to communication skills, there are typically three categories that are worth discussing written communication, verbal communication, and presentations. The distinction between verbal communication and presentation is really the direction of communication. Either way, we'll get to that later. Let's begin by talking about written communication. As you obviously know, software engineers end up writing a lot of code, but they write things other than code all the time too. Software engineers write design documents and comment on them, internal and external documentation, product integration plans, emails, forum questions and answers, and finally, communicate with other engineers directly through instant messaging. All of this extra writing starts to take up more and more of a software engineer's time as they progress through their career. As a junior software engineer, you likely will ask a lot of questions from others directly and on external or internal support forums. You might also communicate with a few other teams by email, but typically junior software engineers get shielded from that. When you go up to mid-level, you will still ask for help from others, but you will also be expected to write more design documents for features that you're working on, solicit feedback on these designs, and provide feedback on others' designs as well. Depending on the features, you might also start writing more internal and external documentation at this point. At the senior level, the scope of problems you're assigned gets bigger, often to the point where no one person can deliver the entire project within a reasonable time frame. At this point, you will be making large design decisions affecting the entire team, and you will be communicating these decisions through much more involved design documents. At the staff level and beyond, the scope of problems that you are assigned to deal with are so big that no one team can solve it within a reasonable amount of time. These architecture decisions affecting the entire organization will again be communicated through design documents and a significant amount of internal documentation. As you progress through your career, your written communication skills will become more and more important to the point where not being able to communicate well over written mediums will seriously restrict your career growth. Now, while I would consider written communication to be the most important communication skill, verbal communication is not far behind. Verbal communication comes into play during meetings, especially those where you brainstorm design decisions. In essence, written communication is a slow process with a long feedback cycle, while verbal communication is about as instant as it gets. Therefore, being able to get your ideas out in words effectively is really important. Additionally, in verbal design meetings, you have to be diplomatic and careful in your delivery of information and opinions. I don't mean this in the sense that you shouldn't call people idiots, that's obvious, but you need to be cognizant of your own reactions to new information, especially the sort of information that goes against your perspective of the given problem or solution. It's actually somewhat challenging if you are not well practiced in it. The further along in the career you are, the more opinionated you have to become, and the better you must be at resolving conflicts of opinion on the fly during a conversation. Additionally, you must be able to confidently deliver your side of the story and push back when something really does not work. These debates of how to solve a problem will become more and more common, and such meetings become incredibly unproductive if there are a few very loud people eating up all the time because they do not know how to communicate well. On the other hand, seeing high-level design discussions between great communicators is an incredible experience. Becoming a good verbal communicator takes a lot of time and effort if you're not naturally good at it, but the good thing is that it's like any other skill, you can actually improve in it. There are a lot of courses out there that help with building these skills, and being an exceptional verbal communicator can provide a massive boost to your career as a software engineer. These past two subsections really focused on direct, back-and-forth communication. Typically, this type of communication is highly practical. Its purpose is to try and solve some immediate issue. There is another type of communication, one that is typically done in one direction with very little room for back and forth, presentations. Most people, when they hear the word presentation, default to thinking about public speaking, PowerPoint slide decks, and large halls with projectors. However, that's just one type of presentation, and thinking about presentations in that form can actually be rather limiting. The purpose of a presentation is to inform, persuade, or motivate others of something. The medium of such presentations can be a lecture, a written document, a blog post, a video, a book, or a live webcast. The medium does not matter. What does matter is the purpose. 
There are a lot of different reasons for doing presentations in software engineering. For example, if someone found a new tool that they want to convince others to use, they may make a live presentation with a demo to show off how great this new tool is. This is relatively common to be done in a lunch and learn type format. I actually have an example of a presentation I have done that is not standard. The documentation regarding how to set up a consistent debug environment in a reproducible manner within our codebase was spread across a massive number of documents. So I made a new document that summarizes everything with clear examples and a step-by-step -step guide to get a stable debug environment in a number of different settings. This document is essentially a presentation of my findings and its purpose is to inform people on how to get a reproducibly stable debug environment within our tool ecosystem. As you become more and more senior, the necessity of knowing how to present information and persuade people will become more and more important. This is because when you are trying to convince opinionated engineers, you need to be able to do it right. Doing it right involves figuring out the intended audience for your presentation, establishing a shared context for the problem space, laying out the problem in full along with assumptions about it, then providing your solution with all the benefits and drawbacks that come with it. Either way, I think that this covers everything that I wanted to share with regards to communication, even though I have skipped over so many skills that could be covered under the communication umbrella. Either way, let's now move on to the next section of the video talking about the organizational skills that are necessary in a software engineer's career. Now, communicating with others is not the only thing that software engineers do. They also write code, debug issues, think about different approaches that are appropriate to solve some problem, and deal with paperwork. This is a lot of things to do, and it's actually difficult to remain productive when you juggle this much work. This is where organizational skills come in. Organizational skills are skills that allow you to understand how to remain productive and effective even when faced with a lot of varied work. The first skills that are worth talking about are prioritization and planning. These skills are very intertwined, therefore it makes sense to talk about them together. As I already mentioned, a software engineer will have a lot of varied work, all of which must be completed. Sometimes the priorities will not be very clear, and this is a problem that the software engineer will have to figure out themselves. Once the priorities are somewhat clearer, the next step is to plan the approach of tackling your infinite work backlog. It's actually very common for feature requests to come in with the words HIGH PRIORITY written out in full caps and flashing red in the feature description. Oftentimes, it's not actually high priority, and figuring out the true priority is left as an exercise for the reader of that feature request. However, when the rough priority is ascertained, the engineers will plan out the set of steps that they need to take to implement everything. As an example, a bug that is affecting 20% of the users must be fixed before a tiny refactor of a class that mostly does what it is supposed to do just fine. Figuring out how to interleave tasks to get everything done is part of such planning. The next organizational skill that is closely related to planning is time management. This is a super important organizational skill, as that is what actually keeps you stress-free during the week and can keep your evenings and weekends free of work as well. Any effective software engineer learns how to manage their time well. Making sure that meetings don't overflow, that deadlines don't creep up on them unexpectedly, and that any time-sensitive work is done as soon as reasonably possible. An effective plan will always try and allocate an appropriate amount of time for each task so as not to have to rush decisions. In line with time management and planning, an extremely important organizational skill is work estimation. It is extremely common for managers and other stakeholders to ask how soon you can finish a certain feature. A software engineer does not necessarily have to be 100% accurate with their prediction, but they can't be extremely off on their prediction either. If you say that something will take a week and it took two, that's more or less fine. If you say that something will take a month, but it ends up taking a full year, then that's a problem. Only thing that you can do that is worse is to just shrug your shoulders and say, I don't know, man, without any further qualification or deliberation. Now, since work estimates are likely to be wrong on absolutely everything, you need to be flexible and adaptable. If some infrastructure that you're waiting on is taking a long time, but you need to deliver a high priority feature that depends on that infrastructure, you must adapt quickly and figure out how to temporarily work around the missing infrastructure. Another reason for being flexible and adaptable is that requirements aren't just able to change, they are actually extremely likely to change, and not just once, over the lifetime of a project. Therefore, software engineers must be extremely adaptable to take these changing requirements in stride and continue making progress regardless of the changes. The next skill that I want to point out is decision making. Any engineering role is just a game of trade-offs, and software engineering is no exception. There are always many ways that one can approach to solve a given problem, but each solution will come with its own set of pros, cons, and tech debt. 
This massive number of possible solutions means that you have to be a very effective decision maker as a software engineer. That means that as you make your design documents, you need to both make decisions and provide good and convincing reasons for going one way over all the others. Another organizational skill I want to talk about is delegation. As a software engineer progresses through their career, they will be given larger and larger tasks. At some point, these tasks will be impossible to handle alone, and thus some of the work will have to be delegated to other engineers on the team. Now, if you delegate just by picking people at random, you likely will have a very bad time. This is because some people are extremely well suited to some tasks, but will flounder and fail at others. Therefore, delegation of tasks also involves knowing your team and who is well suited for what task. Additionally, to be good at delegation, you have to also learn how to manage all that work without micromanaging other software engineers. This is actually quite hard, because building trust in others is not easy. That lack of trust is actually the common reason for why some managers micromanage the hell out of their teams. The last organizational skill, and one that builds on top of the previous one, is teamwork. While I mentioned it last, it is arguably the most important one, and one that you will have to pick up fast. Large and reliable software is typically built by teams over a long period of time. This means that you have to know how to work in a team, as you will not stick around for too long if you don't. Now, when it comes to teamwork, there are hard skills in software engineering related to working in a team. Things like version control and code reviews come to mind immediately, but the soft skills are fairly apparent too. Being willing to help teammates with work, being gracious in receiving help and feedback, and keeping your team's abilities in mind when making decisions are all important aspects of teamwork that you should learn. Anyway, there are a lot of other soft skills that I do not have time to cover, but I feel that I have at the very least talked about the most important ones. Therefore, in the interest of time, let's move on to the last section of this video. Now we get to the section of the video where I get to share some advice and insights that I have learned regarding soft skills. I will try to provide some way for you to focus your efforts along with ways to practice soft skills even before you start your first job or internship as a software engineer. I will go roughly in the same order as the other sections of the video did. The very first thing that I suggest to anyone looking to improve their soft skills is to focus on their writing first. This is in part because most CS students don't spend enough time developing their writing skills in general and because it's an investment that will continue paying off throughout your entire career. As I mentioned earlier, as you get promoted to higher and higher positions, your written communication skills will become more important. Even if you switch to management, you will still need those written skills to make reports and proposals to senior management. How can you improve? Well, I think that a good place to start is to just practice getting your thoughts across in some written format. For example, I have written about 55,000 words in 2021 and around 41,500 this year so far, and that doesn't count the writing I did at work. You obviously don't have to go as hard as I did, but writing on whatever interests you, even a little, will help. Another suggestion I have is to really focus on learning how to ask questions well. The majority of your work will be doing things that you initially do not know how to even approach. Therefore, you will be asking a lot of questions. And guess what? The better your question, the more likely you are to have others be actually willing to help you. What makes a good question? A good question has all the context necessary to actually help you a list of things that you have attempted and why they don't work, and lastly, some background on what it is that you are actually trying to achieve. I strongly suggest going to xyproblem.info. It should give you some context on what makes a good question. Additionally, if you have the time, then follow the link at the top of the page with the title Asking Smart Questions. That should be a rather insightful read. Now, when it comes to verbal communication and presentations, they are often a sore spot for a lot of software engineers. My hypothesis is that this may be because a lot of software engineers are rather introverted and sometimes are extremely beaten down by imposter syndrome. If that sounds like you, I have a potential solution, Toastmasters. Essentially, Toastmasters is a massive international organization that attempts to teach people public speaking and provides plenty of opportunities for practice. Now, this will probably help with presentations first, but you will over time improve in your verbal communication as well. Just like writing, one of the best ways to improve is to practice. The next piece of advice I have is about work estimation. I would actually not say that it's so much advice as it's some insight from me. Over the past while, I have realized that work estimation is incredibly difficult. And it's not just me saying it. Everyone I personally know and every professional blog I follow says that work estimation is incredibly hard to do. One suggestion that I have heard quite often is that however long you think a task will take you, double that time when actually asked about the timeline by someone for the purposes of planning. That should give you some buffer room when you inevitably hit unexpected roadblocks, and it's always a good idea to underpromise and overdeliver if no problems materialize. 
Another piece of advice I have for you is that teamwork is actually incredibly important, and having some way to display your teamwork skills on your resume will go a long way when looking for your first job. Therefore, if you're in university, I strongly encourage you to take as many group project classes as you can. Additionally, if you have the time, join some student development clubs. Our university had one about satellites, and another about an autonomous submarine that was pretty cool. There are similar volunteer opportunities outside of uni too if you aren't a current student. The last piece of advice I have for you is that you should keep practicing and improving your soft skills even after you get a job as a software engineer. Here's the thing, every new position you take will likely have different tools, languages and business practices in place. However, your soft skills will be universally applicable. Even more importantly, your soft skills will play a major role in your professional development and career progression. Therefore, do not let your soft skills stagnate and try to improve them slowly over time. You will thank yourself later. Anyway, that's about all I had for you today, so let's wrap up this video series. In this video, you have gotten a high-level overview of some of the soft skills that are used by professional software engineers, both in terms of communication skills and in terms of organizational skills. Additionally, I provided you with some advice on the matter and ways to improve your skills regardless if you are in the industry or not. This was the last video in the series on applied software engineering, and I really hope that you find all the videos useful. If you have not seen all the videos and would like to get the context of what the proverbial tools of the software engineering trade are, then I suggest you check out the full playlist here, but maybe skip the introductory first video. Also, feel free to ask questions if you have any. I try to respond to all the comments I get, and I have made a few videos based on viewer requests so far. Anyway, thank you for your time, bye.